Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. I am so glad you are here to worship with us this morning. Whether you're here in person on this cold, slushy day or warm at home on the live stream, I'm glad you've taken time to worship. This is a community where all are welcome. Whether you are a seeker or believer, a doubter, or a longtime Christian, or like most of us, some mix of all of the above, you are welcome here. Sarah Wines has some notes about our life together. Good morning. As always, if you're here in person, please complete the friendship registers you'll find at the ends of the pews. Pass them down and back so that, and look at them so that you'll know the names and can greet the people who are sitting near you. And please read your bulletin, not just for the liturgy, but for the announcements about things that are going on around here. If there is a prayer that you'd ha like to have read for prayers for people, you'll find um, cards that you can write um, prayers on for us to read during that time. Um, a single sentence, legible, on a card that you, will, that you can give us right at the beginning of the hymn after the worship. After the sermon, sorry. <laughs> after the sermon. So some things to take note of. Tomorrow is the last day to order lilies for Easter. Is there an insert on that in your bulletin? Yes, yes. okay, so take a look at that if you uh, would like to do that. Tomorrow's the last day. Um, take note that next Sunday is the Bread for the World offering of letters, so you can plan to stay after worship to do that. And during March, we focus particularly on the ways we engage our gifts in community. And I would like to invite Sam Woolsey to tell us how he gets joy in engaging his gifts. Hello, my name is Sam Woolsey and I'm a high school senior. All 18 years of my life have been spent at Blacksburg Presbyterian Church. And one of the things I love most is sharing my gifts with this congregation. From the very first time my dad took me to help spread mulch, I found a special joy in giving back to my community. More recently, I have been able to worship God through music, both here at BPC and away at Massanetta Springs Middle School Conference. I am glad to continue our tradition of great music at BPC, adding the marimba to the repertoire. Music, to me, is vitally important to worship because it has a way of expressing our deepest inclinations, from praise to sorrow. It is an honor for me to share that with the church. Music, however, is not the only thing vital to worship. Worship requires everything from children's packets to choir members. 
Blacksburg Presbyterian Church does great work, enacting everything from wonder wonderful services to international missions. This work does not happen by chance. It comes from dedicated people who want to give back to their community, locally and globally. Their contributions are big and small, and many require no expertise. As a member of the Matthew 25 team, I simply offer my perspective as a high school student on structural racism. I encourage all of you to think of one thing that you like that BPC does. And really, I, I want you to take a minute. Have you thought of it? Good. Now think of one thing that you can do to help make that part of BPC happen. Have you thought of that? Great. I hope you all find a way to use your gifts. Thanks so much, Sam. The engagement questionnaire can be accessed, accessed on the BPC webpage, and that is how you let us know how you would like to use your gifts. You can also get a paper copy in the gathering space. And we encourage you to complete it by the end of March so that we can can um, kind of compile everything and give it to the people who lead ministries. So this is a pledge of how you would like to use your gifts during the year, and it's also, even if you're doing them the same way that you did before, it's also an assessment of your interest because it's used by the ministries who are looking for volunteers. We extend a warm welcome today to our mission partners from the Philippines, Desa Quesada Palm and Kabi Palm, who are sitting over here. This is the first time they've been here, and we are so excited to meet them in person. You will hear them from them later in worship and also have a chance to have some dialogue with them in the fellowship hall after worship, so please join us there. Let us now center ourselves as we begin our worship together. Please rise your body or in spirit and let us lift our voices together as we worship God. All, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. This is a place of nourishment. This is a space to quench our thirst. Come, all who seek, there's plenty for all.
Let us pray. Spirit of life, spirit of love, breathe your breath of peace on us this day. Draw us ever closer to you. Fill our hearts with trust, trust, and our spirits with hope. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, hear what Jesus says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. God does not seek to heap burdens of shame and guilt upon us. On us. God always longs to set us free. Trust in that. Let us confess our brokenness together. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive us our name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. Grant us grace more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Good, very good. These were God's first words over us and all creation. They will be God's last words as well. There is goodness planted in us deeper than all that is wrong. So here, and trust the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. As forgiven people, we're set at peace with each other, with ourselves, with our God. And so we greet one another with a sign of that peace. And as we do so, I invite children to come forward. The peace of Christ be with you. So, sometimes I get afraid. Do y'all get afraid sometimes? What are, <laughs> what are some things that make you afraid? Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing? The dark, oh my goodness, yes. The unknown, absolutely. Those are two great examples. Sometimes when I do something wrong, I get afraid I'm going to get in trouble or that someone's not going to like me anymore. Do you ever have that fear? Yeah. God is love. That's what the Bible tells us. And God's love never ends. God's love doesn't end in the dark. It doesn't end when we are facing something we don't know about or we don't know how it'll turn out. It doesn't end when we screw up or make terrible mistakes. God's love never ends. 
It's like your parents or the adults who take care of you. They love you. That's what God's love is like. There's a little song that helps me remember that. Could I sing it for you? Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. And I have promised, promised to be always near. Could y'all repeat those words after me? And y'all join in, please, too. Don't be afraid. My love is stronger. My love is stronger than your fear. Don't be afraid. afraid. My love is stronger. stronger. And I have promised promised. to always be near. Did I get the order right? To always be near. We're going to sing that all together. Kathy's going to lead us because she has a stronger voice. And Amanda's going to play for us. And we'll sing it through twice. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats or to God's garden. In preparation for hearing God's word, read and proclaimed, let us pray. Holy One, now as we hear your word, fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may delight in your presence. Sharpen our minds that we may discern your truth. Shape our wills that we may desire your ways. We pray in Jesus, word made flesh. Amen. So during Lent this year, we are working on unpacking some theological topics that may be tough for us. Last week, we talked about sin. Next week and the week after, we're going to talk about things that seem perhaps better, like forgiveness and God loving everybody but that are more complicated when we really try to live by them. Today's topic is hell, the easiest of the bunch. We have two texts. They were a little long for the bulletin, so I invite you to listen as I read. First from Matthew 25, verses 34 to 45. 
Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it, to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothes, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, Just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And then from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 26. There was a rich man dressed in purple and fine linen who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger from what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received good things, and Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are in agony. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These stories are the two most elaborate descriptions we have of hell in the Bible. There aren't any other stories that are as elaborate and descriptive as these. I think it is worth noting that their image or description of how we get to hell doesn't necessarily match our dominant American Christian narrative, which is that hell is a matter of belief or unbelief. Here, it's a matter of action or inaction. The litmus test is how we treat our neighbors. If we treat them poorly, 
We are separated from God in a fundamental way that feels torturous, like fire that never ends. These are the two passages that really give us that image. Just these two. However we conceive of hell, it is not something Jesus talked about a lot, or literally. Hell is not mentioned in the Bible nearly as many times as things like money, how we treat the poor, or love. Hell, as a place of punishment, is not mentioned in all of the Old Testament, which should give us pause when we fall back on that old stereotype of the God of the Old Testament being a God of wrath. Hell is mentioned in the New Testament, but out of the 27 books in the New Testament, it's only mentioned in five, and within those, only a couple dozen times. So whatever we think about hell, it just wasn't central to Jesus' message. He spent most of his time on other things. I think that's important to know. And he also didn't talk about it literally. There are two words that get translated in the New Testament for hell. The first is Hades, which was a Greek mythological concept. You're most likely familiar with it. Hades is not a fun place, but it's also not a place of eternal torture and torment. It's just where you go after you die, where all of us go after we die. And the other word that gets translated as hell is Gehenna, which means the Valley of Hinnom, which was a real place. It was the trash dump outside of Jerusalem where fires always burned to burn the trash and dogs fought over the scraps with gnashing of teeth. It's a metaphor. When Jesus talks about hell, he uses myths and metaphors. So if he doesn't talk about it literally, maybe we shouldn't either. I find it tempting to dismiss the whole idea of hell. I definitely don't believe in some place under the earth or off in some unimaginable realm where there's a saucy, sneaky guy in red tights who's bugging us forever. I also don't believe in eternal conscious torment. That idea has done irreparable harm for generations. It has caused genocide and profound psychic suffering. So it's tempting to just throw it out. But I think there is something useful, at least about the word. Rob Bell wrote a fantastic book about heaven and hell called Love Wins. It is very easy and approachable to read. And in it, he tells about traveling to Rwanda shortly after the ethnic cleansings that took place there. His plane touched down, and here's what he described seeing. He says, I remember arriving in Kigali, Rwanda in December 2002 and driving from the airport to our hotel. And soon after leaving the airport, I saw a kid, probably 10 or 11, with a missing hand standing by the side of the road. Then I saw another kid down the street missing a leg. 
then another in a wheelchair. Hands, arms, legs. I must have seen 50 or more teenagers with missing limbs in just those first several miles. His guide explained, during the genocide, one of the ways to most degrade and humiliate your enemy was to remove the arm or hand or leg of your enemy's young child so that years later that child's parents would have to live with that reminder of their humiliation and defeat. Sometimes hell is not too strong of a word. Some words are strong for a reason. We are able to create all manner of hell for ourselves and for each other. Jesus used strong metaphors and dramatic language and hyperbole for a reason. He wanted to get our attention. How we treat one another matters for them and for us. He used the strongest language possible to describe the hellacious conditions we create on earth for each other and ourselves. When we fail to love our neighbors, which is what both of these passages are about, we separate ourselves from each other and from God, which is how we thought about sin last week as separation. And I think that's what hell really is. Separation. A great chasm as far as the right is from the left. When we are separated from God, from love, from our fellow travelers, that's hell. God doesn't need to create hell for us. We do a fine job of it on our own. question for me is whether we can ever get out of hell once we find ourselves in it. There's a verse that gives me hope. It might be my favorite verse about hell in the whole Bible, which is maybe a low bar, but in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus is talking to Peter, and he says, and I tell you, You are Peter, which means rock, and you are the rock upon which I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against God's love. The image is of God's love, God's kingdom, on the march, invading the gates of hell, and they don't stand a chance. Gates of hell, what we find ourselves trapped in, will not prevail. So yes, I do believe in hell. Not in a place of eternal conscious torment, but we are able to create immense suffering for ourselves and for others. Some of the suffering we create and walk through is so intense that hell really isn't too strong of a word. But the love of God persists 
and insists and draws us ever homeward with a longing that will not be satisfied until all are gathered in and Christ is all in all. Amen. may be seated. Would you pray with me? God of love, God who is love, we give you thanks for all the ways you are made manifest in our lives and in creation. For the sweet kindness of strangers and the attention of those we love. For the beauty of snow falling gently and the sun that comes later and brightens our hearts. For all of this we give you thanks and praise. And we pray that you would open our eyes and open our hands and our hearts that we might see you and serve you and our neighbors who are hungry and thirsty, naked, 
strangers, sick, in prison. That we might draw closer to you, see you in all places. These are the prayers of our community. Blessings and thanks for, for Sam Wolsey and his musical gifts to BBC and the world. And thanks for the gentleness of the snow as well as the coming of spring. Give us wisdom and guidance as we seek to care for your earth. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts we offer to Blacksburg Presbyterian Church do more than we could begin to ask or imagine. They connect with people and bless people here in our town and throughout the New River Valley and around the world. One of the places our gifts go are all the way to the Philippines. And today we get to have two of our coworkers in the Philippines here with us, and they're going to share just a little bit about what our gifts do there. Good morning. Mayim Buntag, we say in the Philippines uh, where we are from. And my name is Dessa Quesada Palm, and um, I do a lot of work with a passion that I've had since a child, which is in the arts. And I work with young people who then serve the communities using their creative gifts. And we come to thank you for making manifest God's love and grace through your prayers, through your support, and the warm welcome we've had uh, thus far since yesterday from Scott and Melanie and from Mary and Bill. Thank you very much. I have uh, dropped in on you at different times um, through the internet, actually. But boy, it makes a whole lot of difference to be here together with all of you. And as was mentioned, we were uh, warmly welcomed in uh, coming here by Scott and Melanie initially. And Scott continues to say that this is the most wonderful congregation in all of Virginia. <laughs> most of the time. No, he didn't say <laughs> He didn't say that. He said, period. And of course, for Bill and Mary, who last night had us into their wonderful home uh, for dinner and for an overnight. And, and Sarah, good to see you again after many years. Um, Sarah and I met years ago in the Philippines, actually. So it's just been a wonderful time. And I wanted you to think for a moment, if you can remember back where you might have been in April of last year, April 5th of 2022, last year. We were strapping a solar pure onto the back of our truck in the Philippines. And what is a solar pure? It is, if you can imagine, something similar to what might be an old fashioned lemonade cart, maybe six feet by four feet that you can push and move around to different places. But it has a solar panel over its top that powers a one horsepower engine uh, a, a pump that draws water through five filters and then through two UV lights and sends the water out drinkable and clean. And it seems just so beautiful that today in our scripture passage, it was read Matthew 25. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. And on that day, we were responding to a call that had come from an island that we visited. And when we visited that little island, we said, there is no way we can get our solar pure to the island, although they needed it desperately. 
but our staff said, we need to try. And I said, it's really impossible because to that island are no big boats that move back and forth. It's just these small banka canoe type boats. And our instrument is somewhat too large for the boat, but let's try. So we went and, and the community gathered and people lifted up the solar pure and boom, laid it on the boat. It hardly could fit. And there we went across to this island. And we get to the island, and as we come to the island, people are wondering, what's this unit that's about to be brought here? And the storm was actually still blowing from one side of the island, so we had to enter the side of the island where the water was a little calmer, which made it difficult to find just the right spot where we could pull in, and again, a group of the community lift up the instrument, the solar pure, on to the shore. But it was possible. And they rolled it on over to a location that they had chosen as to where we might set this up. And a hose was connected to their water line, which was actually coming from the mainland in a big drum of water underneath the water up to their island, but it had been damaged and contaminated, so what was coming to them was not good water. And so we were able to hook our unit onto it, and then water suddenly was moving through the system, and it was just wonderful when our, uh, the, 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 uh, what we might call the captain of the, the island community opened up the water and out came this wonderful clean water for them and, and the, the, the group around applauded and there they had clean water. It was a wonderful moment. And I want to go back and say to you that I know where you were on April 5th last year. You were there with us. You were there with us as we took that across. You were there with us as we rolled it to the place. You were there with us as we opened it up and clean water came out. Because Dessa and I cannot be where we are doing what we do without all of you here being willing to pray for us, being willing to walk with us and journey with us. And we are your hands over there in the Philippines and we're both so grateful that you are here and you are praying for us and we're able to do what we're able to do in the Philippines because we are a family together. God bless you all. Thank you. I hope you'll stay after worship to hear more stories like that. Let us give thanks for all we have been given and what is ours to give.
giver of all good gifts, thank you for these gifts. We ask that you would use them in your world for your ministries of healing, liberation, and salvation. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Friends, go out and do not be afraid, for God's love is stronger. God has promised to be always near. So as you go, may you go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the unending love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit, this day, unto your life eternal. Amen.